In today's video, I'm going to be showing you on how you can super easily make these super fun shaking effects that are fully customizable, easy to implement, and completely free. Before we get started with this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Slightnik for making this super epic camera shake which is fully free. So installation is super easy. Either you can follow the link in the description down below and click this module is available from the Roblox library and follow this hyperlink to install it. Or you can head over to Roblox Studio, open up the toolbox here, then search for camera shaker and click on the first module that has the name Slightnik and open it. Now, once you have that installed, we are ready to use the camera shaker module here. So it's good practice to put our modules inside of replicated storage so both the server and the client can use it. So I'm going to put it inside of replicated storage here. And because we want this camera shake to affect just the local player, what we're going to do is we're going to create a local script inside of started GUI. We're going to call this name camera shaker. And I'm just going to demonstrate to you a couple of features that this module has. First of all, we need to make sure the module is ready for usage. First, we need to import the camera shaker module, and we can do this by creating a variable, local camera shaker, let's call it, just like this, and then we can say equals, and we can initialize its value to be require, and then we're going to say game dot replicator storage colon wait for child, and then camera shaker. Now that we have this, we can use the camera shaker module inside of our program. Next, we're going to create a function called shake camera local function shake camera like this we're going to drop a line and then in here we're going to add a parameter called shake cf like this and shake cf is the c frame value that represents the offset to apply for the shake effect and before we actually do anything more we're going to create a new variable called local camera and its value is going to be game dot workspace dot camera then inside of this function, what we're going to do is we need to set the offset of the camera and we can do this by saying camera, oopsies, camera like this dot CF frame, make sure you do the capitalization with the C and the F equals. And then in here, what we can do is camera dot CF frame times by shake CF. Now, this is essentially the function that will handle all of the actual camera shaking. Then from here, what we can do is we can create another new variable called render priority. The render priority will essentially tell us which priority that this has to render. So in simple words, that's what it does. And we can uh, create a new variable here by saying local render priority equals. And then in here, we're going to say enum dot render priority dot camera dot value. Oops, dot value plus equal one. And now what we're going to do here, oopsies, is plus one, sorry, is we're creating the brand new variable render priority and we're setting it to be enum.renderPriority.camera.value plus one. So it's just making it plus one more priority than the typical camera value. Next, what we need to do is we need to create a new variable called uh, camshake. And this is effectively going to be the main controller for our camshaker here. So what we can do is we can say local cam shake equals and then in here what we're going to do is we're simply going to say camera shaker dot new and then we're going to pass our render priority which we defined above and then we're going to pass our shake camera function which we also passed above now we're ready to start using this constructor to do all types of effects so first of all what we actually need to do one step i was missing is we need to start the cam shake and we can do this by simply saying cam shake like this and then saying colon start. Now this is going to essentially do exactly what you think it does, is going to start the camera shaker. Now from here, there is a couple of things we can do. We can do shakes with a default preset. Thank you to Slightnik for providing those. We can do our own custom shakes and we can make shakes sustained and we can also stop sustained shakes. So let me demonstrate how we can do all of these. Our first example here is going to be using some of the default presets. So I'm just going to make it that when we click a click detector inside of part, it makes it shake. So I'm going to create a new click detector inside of this part. So you don't have to do this at all, but I'm just going to do this for demonstration purposes. And I'm just going to say game.workspace.part.clickdetector.mouseclick.connect function. And then in here, 
I just need to make sure cam shake is started before we initialize any shakes. And now how you can create a shake by using a default preset, you can simply say cam shake colon shake. And then in here, we're just going to pass camera shaker dot presets. And now there's quite a few presets. So if we navigate over to the documentation on GitHub, we're going to see that we have, where is it? All of the presets down here. So we have bump, explosion, earthquake, bad trip, handled camera, vibration, and rough driving, all with a description and also with an ideal type. So like I mentioned earlier, you can do one-time shakes that only happen once, or you can do sustained shakes, which continuously happen. And we're going to be experimenting with both. But right now, as we're just on singular shakes, I'm going to show you how we can use, let's just do this bump shake. Okay, so let's return to Roblox Studio. And then we're just going to say dot bump. And let's give this a go inside of Studio. So let's boot that up. And now everything should be working here. Okay, so here I am in Studio and I click this part. And as you can see, we get that effect. Snazzy. Now I also mentioned you can create your own custom effects. And this is very true. We can do this by saying colon shake once. And then in here we can pass a magnitude a roughness, a fade in time, so how long it takes to fade in, a fade out time, and I wouldn't worry about the position influence or the ROT influence either. So we can pass the magnitude in, so I would just recommend playing with this and finding a value that you like. You can also input a roughness value, you can do a fade in time, and a fade out time, which I'm going to both set to 5, and now we can give this a go. You're going to notice the higher you set the magnitude and the higher you set the roughness, the more drastic the effect will be. So here we are, and I'm going to click on it, and whoa, okay, that's a major effect. Um, yeah, okay, and you're going to notice it's starting to fade out now. So once again, trial and error will find the effective values you want to use here. Now, you can use other presets if you want to, but I also was talking about something a little bit earlier called sustain shakes. So if we just change this out here, what we can do is you're going to notice we have the option to do the method shake sustain, just like this. Now, we can also use a preset here, and if we have a look back on the documentation, you're going to notice that we also have the presets with ideal types. So I'd be interested in trying rough driving. So we're going to copy that preset, and just like the exercise before, we're going to say camera shaker dot presets dot and then rough driving. Now we also need to be able to stop this sustain because at the moment this sustain will continue to happen until the user leaves the game. So what we can do is we can say wait ten, and then we can say cam shake, uh, cam shake sorry, and then colon stop sustained, and then we can pass in a duration. I'm just going to put in 5, and let's give this a whirl. I'll also make the weight 5 just for the sake of it. Now, once again, when using these presets and value, I would definitely recommend that you experiment and find something you like. Now, here we are in the game. I'm going to head over to this part. I'm going to click on the part, and as you can see, we get the effects of some rough driving here. And then, after a couple of seconds, it's going to stop working, just like that. There we go. I think it's all done. Now I hope this video helped you understand the basics of using this camera shake module. There's a lot more to do with it and hopefully this video has spiked your interest and you'll be able to look into it and develop with it a little bit more. Now I will leave a link down below to this amazing repository so you can look at the documentation for yourself. Once again, a massive shout out for Slightnik for making this and I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you'd like to talk about Roblox or anything like that or scripting support, you can head over to my forums, which is forums.thecookie.dev or you can join the Discord down below or you can join both. I hope this video helped you. That's all from me. Thank you for tuning in and bye bye.